Dana, you got to see Gonzaga today. What were your initial impressions of the team? It's funny because even before seeing them, I kind of went back to last year's notes. There's so many returning players. And the big standout to me was looking at Killian Tilly and seeing that he's healthy and that he can play. And I, what I had forgotten was go back to last year and how close to the start of the game it was when he was actually ruled out. And I now remember them coming up to me and kind of racing up to me and saying, he's not playing, he's not starting, he's not going to be able to play which changed everything about that team. And it doesn't mean that they would have beaten Florida State, but I think taking him out of the lineup, not having him on offense was a huge difference. And that was the standout of last year, was that this, this Gonzaga team could not get an offensive flow going. So watching them today and seeing him, my thought was, this is a different team. You know, Rui is a different player now. And just the amount of time that he's gotten um, reading so many stories going in, hearing about the language barrier that he was dealing with and how much it's improved, seeing the way he's able to communicate now with guys on the floor, that was really obvious. And I think those are just a couple of the things that make a difference when you talk about a rematch where, for the most part, these teams are returning most of the same key players. I think that's going to be a big difference in that game. As a sideline reporter, you kind of look at storylines in a game. Are there any other storylines other than the ones you just talked about that you're, you're looking at? I mean, there's so many. I, you know, I, the Rui Hachimura with uh, the idea of language being so difficult in the beginning, I think people take it for granted. You're playing basketball. You can communicate. You don't need, you know, you need when you are teaching somebody a game. And Mark Few is great sort of in, in joking about how sarcastic he can be. And that does not translate at all. So if you already have a language barrier and now you're trying to communicate with a player that the smile and the nod from him, they always knew it meant he had no idea what they were talking about. I love that storyline. Um, you know, Florida State on the other side sort of has a horrible story that goes with it right now with Phil Kofer losing his father and hearing about how some of the guys have rallied around him and dedicating the season to Mike and, and to Phil's late dad. It, things like that to me are interesting to see how a team rallies and it's no it's not their dad but it's their teammate who's a leader on that team whether he was playing or not was a leader on that bench being able to not be there with them but maybe bring something. Initial impressions of Florida State today as well. Florida State has sort of this ability to maybe not beat you in that one through five, but you put all 10 guys out there and that, that kind of depth they have, or maybe even just the six through 11, they have the ability possibly to beat you there. And that worked for them last year. Their athleticism certainly worked for them last year, but that's where I go back to, well, who was Gonzaga missing? Well, Killian Tilly was not there. And Rui was a different player. And you've had additions because of transfers. So I, I think Florida State presents the same problems it did last year. Um, but I just still feel like Gonzaga might be the deeper team all the way around.